operating at 191 watts. Hi everyone, this is Mike Moo. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna give my short review, well, short review, about the Zero Breeze Mark II portable air conditioner that you see here. Unlike a lot of other units on the market right now, this is one of the very few units that actually is being produced with a real air conditioner inside. There's a real compressor in here that actually cools the air down using the traditional compressor techniques that, uh, that this nice, man, I'll have a link up here, invented way back early in the 1900s. So this guy uh, is actually a 2300 BTU, a maximum cooling capacity, which means that it will actually really cool you down. Now the specifications here say that it will actually cool you down, uh, drop 30 degrees within 10 minutes of it powering on. And I've actually tried this in multiple different scenarios, inside, outside, uh, in the car, just in my office, just casually walking around uh, with it wherever I can just go ahead and take it and try it out, and that has proven to be true. So it does take minutes to drop down to 30 degrees, uh, but that's actually kind of a good thing because this is battery powered. And it also only uses a maximum, only uses a maximum of about 240 watts. All right, so this isn't gonna be something that's gonna completely drain down the batteries really quickly. In fact, if you get the battery option, which is noted down here, this is actually a little battery sled, you can actually run off the AC off of up to a maximum six hours in, I suppose, laboratory conditions. In my use case scenario right now, it's actually a little bit warm. It is about 86 degrees where I'm sitting right now. And I actually tested this out the other day uh, where I just basically turned it on and put it on close to maximum speed and I was able to get up to about, I got up to two hours and I just had just below the 50% mark. All right, so in my use case scenario, it really does provide at least three to four hours of uh, operating time in maximum cooling mode and uh, in optimal conditions at 86 degrees here in Southern California inside. All right, so, so that part's really true. You, you can't actually get those type of specifications if you try to plug in a traditional air conditioner, like a box window air conditioner and plug it into like an inverter. Now this is really designed for outdoor RV life and I definitely see that to be the case uh, with a couple of caveats, all right? So if you look at the pictures here and I'll have a link down below to where you can get this. This is on Amazon right now for roughly, this is an eye-watering $1,600 or if you get it on sale, you can actually get it for $1,399 with a, with a battery slide from time to time and that's including one battery. Uh, if you look at the pictures and the link, you'll see there's someone, use case scenario, where they're just sitting outside with the unit without this, this little attachment hose thing and uh, just enjoying himself where it's cool. And that is really the ideal case scenario. This is something where uh, this is really designed to cool one person, not really a whole party of people, at most two people, all right? And that's really because the capacity of this is 2300 BTUs only. All right, now when you get a traditional window air conditioner, typically they start out about 5,000 BTU for like $100 right now. So this is roughly half that. So with that in mind, if, if anybody's thinking about using this unit in an enclosed environment in uh, the sun, where like you're in a desert environment, California is basically a big desert, it's really not gonna cool you off that much. It'll cool off exactly the spot that it is pointing at and then basically nothing else. You're still gonna be very uncomfortable. It is not gonna be great. It, it, this will not cool down an oven is what I'm telling you. Now, if you are in the shade in the car where you already cooled it down a bit and it could help keep you a little bit more comfortable than normal. Let's say you just gotta take a nap. Um, I would advise you if you were gonna use this in the car is that you know you had the AC running, it already cooled off the place, then park it under a tree, and then uh, you know put this in and plug it in, and then have the exhaust vents out. So there's a lot of ifs that kind of need to happen in order for this to work out the most optimally. Now, this is only one of two portable, battery-powered, real air conditioning units that I've tried. And this is by far clearly the best, but you're paying a big, big price for, for the cooling capacity that you're getting, all right? 
Now this actually has a dual duct system. So it has input and output here in the ducts. You, there's actually an adapter that you can go ahead and that is included that you can just put in so that you have one hose going in, one hose going out. That really helps with the cooling efficiency. And then you have the front duct here that actually uh, expels the cool air as a result of the cooling process with the real compressor inside. Now I have an attachment, I have these attachments that are, in, are, uh, are included already attached. So you see I have this hose system that allows me to angle it in whichever angle that I want to produce, uh, to produce the most air in my direction. And that is something that is, uh, you know, something that I use all the time with it. So I just kept it permanently mounted. If you want to use it in your real portable condition where you're just using it directly outdoors, you're probably not going to carry too much, worry too much about the hose or carry the extra auxiliary hoses that quick snap on here, or maybe not necessarily use this hose because you can just turn it and point it to wherever it is that you want to uh, keep it cool. Now there are a few other gimmicky things about this unit besides the cooling capacity. One of them is that it actually has a built-in light, which is practically useless with this thing on. The light is somewhat kind of dim. It does make the unit look kind of cool. So uh, I guess it does that, but at least you can see where the air conditioning unit is. Now, um, now that I've already talked about the cooling capacity, and again, to be very clear, this is only 2300 BTUs. It will cool basically, spot cool basically one person or up to two people if you're sitting really closely. Let's go over some of the functions up here at the top, all right? We actually have uh, the on-off switch, uh, fan control speeds to the left and right of that, and also a fan-only mode, a super cool-down mode, a regular cool mode, a nighttime cool mode, and then a light switch over here. And every time you press a button, there's going to be that little beep. It also comes with this tiny, teeny, tiny little remote control, which actually is practically useless in the use cases that I use when I'm, I'm have it in, in a fixed position. When you're out and about, I suppose it's directly facing you. You point it right at the front of the unit. You're actually going to get some use out of it. For me, I found this practically useless. And if anything, it's something that I would easily lose. Now, the battery, it's pretty heavy. Why? Because it has over 400 watt hours of power uh, going in here, putting out at 24 volts. It also has two, uh, two to three, three USB ports in the front. One is USB-C, two is USB-A's, and has a separate power switch. This I'll put 24 volts through this uh, connection out here in the back. Now out here, uh, here's one of the design things that I wish that they would have improved on here is that uh, I feel like there needs to be two input ports or, or, or two output ports. You only have one port each. So in UK, use case scenario like what I'm talking about is uh, if I want to run off of the AC adapter power, I actually have to unplug the battery, right? Unplug the battery and plug the, the AC adapter directly into the unit. All right. And then if I want to charge the battery sled, I have to then unplug it from the AC unit and plug it directly into the battery unit. That's just a lot of unplugging. Now, obviously there is a scenario where you don't have to do any unplugging as you pay an extra hundred some dollars probably for another AC adapter in order to work it out. And that's just, you know, extra cost. Another thing is the DC uh, adapter or a DC adapter that is 24 volts or the 12 volt is not included. That is an additional extra expense for something this expensive. I kind of wish that something like that was already included in the unit. All right. Another gripe I have about this, this is 60 decibels. It is not soft or really quiet by any stretch means, uh, but realize it is real on air conditioner. Okay. But not just that it's 60 decibels, it's that periodically I get a little bit of vibration from the unit. Even though this is really, this housing is really well designed, feels really tight, there is still a little bit of vibration that still happens. That where if I go on here, actually there's a little bit of creaking, where I had to put a little bit of pressure to reduce some of the vibration noises or a little bit of whistling noise that comes out as a result of the whole fan system going on. Uh, naturally, the sound actually goes down a little bit or becomes less annoying the lower the fan speed or the compressor uh, setting that you have. But, you know, something at 2300 BTUs, kind of warm as it is right now, I kind of want to have it on full blast. All right, another gripe 
is that the AC does take a little while to uh, boot up, so to speak, to get up to the maximum fullness. And this is gonna be very common for anything that's gonna be battery powered like this because the loads on a typical air conditioner, when you turn it on, there's like a surge of power that it needs to get going. This actually slowly ramps up, which makes it really a lot easier on a battery and does reduce the, um, the specifications required of the power that's coming in and out. So it actually starts out at around seven or eight watts or three watts, and it slowly ramps up over the course of 10 minutes all the way to a maximum of about 220 watts is what it says. In my use cases, uh, I primarily have not hit past or much past 200 watts. I just did 191 just a few minutes ago, and uh, that is directly off of the AC unit um, directly. Okay, so um, I wasn't monitoring how much or if the power changes different from when using the battery pack versus the AC adapter. I imagine it's not too further, too much different. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead now and um, see if I can answer a few questions that some people have. Uh, this does weigh 28.5 pounds. This is not something that, uh, for instance, my wife is going to be wanting to be carrying around because she's kind of small keep that in mind and uh, you can actually charge your battery through solar but they don't actually give you the adapter to do so all right so in my case for me charging through the solar i'm actually going through a battery pack that is plugged into solar right now just charging the battery pack then the battery pack out to the ac adapter unit directly into the battery pack all right so that's one way the other way is you pony up for the 12 volt to 24 volt adapter which Again, I'll link to that too, as uh, a little bit more expensive. All right, now, uh, as far as mobile friendly design, I suppose, yeah, this is about as small as I have seen it. Um, it is, it feels fairly well made, doesn't feel like there's a lot of like extra space in here. So really, if you're looking for a unit that's gonna be around 200, 2300 BTUs, that also has uh, the same power rating. For at least for now in September 2021, you're looking at roughly the same size. So we're looking at something like average here. Now, if you were talking about without the actual battery sled down below, the main unit is 16.8 pounds, which is much more manageable and would really only be feasible if you have the 24 volt adapter uh, for, uh, for power source from your car or from a battery pack. Okay. Now it does really drop 30 degrees. So at 84 degrees, uh, 84, 86 degrees out here. This, when I'm looking at the rating, actually there is, um, there is an actual output uh, temperature reading rating here in the head area. It does actually drop down to 50 something. It gets to 60 pretty quickly and it gets all the way down to um, you know 50 something right at the head within roughly around the 10 minutes. So that seems uh, pretty clear uh, as well. Let's see. Yeah, I think I think that pretty much covers it. It 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 does say it does do what it says it will do. Uh, it is expensive as hell. There are some other competing units that are coming out or are based on a very similar um, compression and design system right now. In fact, I actually see one on Kickstarter. But uh, you know, I I tested one of those out and it actually didn't work out well for me. And actually, it just completely died. So I can't even tell you exactly um, how much worse that is given the price that you're, you're paying for it. But, but a couple things are certain. It's roughly half the BTU, okay, output expected. Uh, it does not feel very well built or made. It does not have a dual duct design, so it's definitely not as efficient as this would be. And uh, the, it didn't have a battery pack system. Actually, the one on Kickstarter does, and they're just copying the same model that they have going on over here. So uh, I suppose the main question is, uh, is something like this worth it for you? Um, where I would definitely would not use it is in a hot car uh, directly in the sun. That's just not gonna work out. You're much better off going to the shade, okay? And just sitting outside. So just forget about that. Now, if you have an RV or a camper scenario where you don't really have a choice and you do want a running AC that does, that's uh, easy on a battery pack, this might make sense. I mean, you got, you got these ducts and adapters and you can just get more of these and just run them around. Um, uh, I would probably figure out a way to insulate these things better, but this is really the only game in town as far as a portable AC unit that actually works, 
all right? And um, since this is version Mark II, they have made some improvements on it. I've not tried Mark I because, you know, version one of any device like something like this really doesn't make sense, at least to me. It's just not worth beta testing. So this has actually worked pretty well. Uh, I don't know if I would personally use this, except if I'm using, if I'm going outdoors camping a lot in really hard, hot environments. A good night's worth of sleep might be really worth it to you, as long as you can just cool yourself. And I would have to put on earplugs, earplugs. Okay, because this 60 decibels is too much for me. Some people like the white noise. Um, I definitely don't like the white noise on here. But I guess in the end, uh, to be clear, this is the best unit you can get right now. Um, there might be some other ones that may be coming out soon, but the, it's, it's always a maybe. They're not on, on the market yet. Uh, I've tested the Emerson. I believe it's the Emerson Zero Cool or Emerson Quiet Cool, Emerson Quiet Cool portable unit. And I'll have a video about that a little bit later, comparing the two of them. And then uh, I'll just tell you right now that I couldn't complete all the tests because it actually failed. It had a lot of other gimmicky things on there, which I found to be almost completely useless, except for the flashlight. But even then, why would you care about having a flashlight on your AC unit? Okay, I'm rambling on right now. Let me see if I can have any questions uh, that I can answer through. Um, all right, where do I buy 24 volt zero breeze car cigarette adapter? You can get it from zerobreezedirectly.com. You can actually try to get one or build yourself. Uh, that's something I haven't tried, but it's definitely possible. The specifications are pretty straightforward. It is really only 24 volts. Uh, does it work for all RVs or part of an RV? And I'm just going through questions off of Amazon right now. It'll work anywhere, really. Uh, if you have an RV, as long as you have a flat surface, Typically, you don't want to shake or move the compressor around too much. Once the unit's on, generally you're fine, so you could just really move it around anywhere. Uh, I think the big challenge is when you move it around everywhere, if you can't get this to directly point at you and you're trying to use this hose thing, uh, just keep in mind there's only certain areas that this will actually turn to. And then keep in mind also that there's a gravity situation. So if I want to point it directly up here, I'm going to have to have some other external thing holding it up. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to flop down. All right, so I actually use clamps to do that just, uh, just because uh, I, I needed to point it one direction and I'm going to a different direction. But I do like that it is flexible. I suppose I could jerry-rig some sort of uh, a situation where they have a bendable piece of metal attached to this that then will do, make it, that, those are different mods that I could do. Can you use this inside my 18 wheel? Yeah, I suppose you could. Um, the thing is, if you're doing an in indoors environment, you definitely want to extract and pull in fresh air. So you're going to have to run hoses out. Now, in the kit, they actually include uh, some sort of styrofoam type of foamy insulation thing with two holes in it. Don't throw those things away. Those things actually fit the holes of the, the intake and exhaust just fine. So it actually helps you position those correctly. You'll have to jerry rig something for your own window or for your own case scenario. That's where a lot of this DIY stuff uh, might come in place. Can I set up a desired temperature? No, the answer is no. You can't set a desired temperature. Um, basically, it's basically on max cooling. You just control the, uh, the, the, the fan speed. Um, how long does it run off my two truck batteries? Okay, so uh, yeah. You're gonna run run it off of your own uh, batteries here because your truck battery is probably lead acid. They don't really run a really long time. You probably want to get an external battery pack to do it. But off the off the battery pack, you're looking at at maximum five hours. Really, typically in hot weather environment, I'd say about four. You're gonna get at least four. All right. If using this inside a car, what is the hose drain to? Uh, wouldn't a window be too high? Well, there's actually tubes that are included that will come out and you can just mount those up towards the window. And I suppose you can kind of clamp it in there somehow and try to insulate the, uh, so that the outside air doesn't come out. All right, noise level for golf cart installation. Sound level is 52 decibels. All right, really depends how close that you are uh, checking the sound levels. I suppose if you're a couple of feet away, this one says 52 decibels. If you're right next to it, it's 60, all right? And then if you uh, move a little bit further away, it will still be 60 at maximum. So that's kind of what you're looking at. Uh, would this be able to cool a small 12 by six room? It's well insulated, it has one window that's in direct sunlight. Direct sunlight is off. All right, so uh, that's, a, that's a difficult one. It really depends on the ambient temperature outside, right? 
uh, I don't think that this is going to cool a 12 by 6 room. You're going to want to go ahead and get like a 5,000 real on uh, air conditioner to, to, to cool that off. Now, even though it's well insulated, I don't know how well the insulation is. If the ambient temperature is pretty darn hot, uh, this is not going to keep up. Okay, it's only 2300 BTUs maximum. Is this made in China? I believe it is made in China. Let's see, can I use my own battery, 12 volts? Yes, you can use your own battery. I would not recommend any lead acid batteries because you're gonna kill those things really quickly. Get a lithium phosphate battery, get something that was designed with, uh, with at least 400 watt hours or more because that's what the bottom sled battery is. The battery is really expensive. They're like $500. So if you wanna spend your own $500 to get a different battery pack, that might be the better way to go, but realize that it won't be an all in one unit that you can just lift up. Okay. Now, um, as far as draining the condensation, you have this. There's actually an opening in the back and they give you this little hose. You put this out to drain uh, into a bowl or something or just put it in a bucket. If you actually have an empty water container, that's what I would do. I would put it there and drain it in there. All right. And can you use a cigarette uh, power inverter with this 500 watts? Okay, so um, a, a, a lot of cigarette lighter circuits have an amp limit, all right? And that's where you're gonna run into an issue. So you wanna make sure that the amp limit will, will handle how much this comes out. Lucky for you, this actually ramps up pretty slowly, okay? And it does 200 watts, right? So keep in mind if you have anything else running, you know, that could be an issue. But if you have the car on, chances are you're just gonna to wanna to use the car AC anyway, all right? So it doesn't seem to make sense in any way, shape or form there. Will this cool close off driver compartment for a Ford van of the rear protection AC? Okay, again, um, Ford van, if you're in the sun, summer weather, 90 some degrees outside, I don't think it's gonna work out well for you. You will get spot cooling on you, everywhere else will be, I mean, just on that body part. So if I have it like right here, it's gonna cool just this area. So yeah, you will feel a little bit cooler, but I don't think that it's gonna cool off your whole cab area. It's just not, it's just too hot. Will this work in a golf cart? I suppose you could. Uh, can you stick it upside down? No, um, I definitely don't recommend it. You stick this up upside down. Typically things like this, you wanna keep it right side up just like this. What vent do you have or recommend? Okay, um, they don't include like vent mounts or anything. They just include the styrofoam with two holes in it. You're gonna wanna jerry rig your own thing uh, for the vent. I just prop it against the window use the foam things, and then I have some other type of insulation around it. Um, can you use it with your own battery? I suppose you could. Keep in mind the specifications of the battery have to be 24 volts. Uh, can I use 110 to charge? Yeah, that is included. Uh, let's see, can it be used in cars, boats? Yeah, noise level, yada yada. I already explained to you, it's about 60 decibels from a couple feet away. Um, let's just say about three feet away on maximum cooling, but there's different frequencies of the sound that could be potentially annoying for you. Uh, how do you get around the law? Okay, no, how many BTU, 2300? Can this be used in a two to four person tent in hot and humid conditions? Yes, you can, but again, maximum two people cooling. You're gonna, be, you're gonna wanna be sitting right in front of it. Uh, do you sell spare batteries? Yeah, they do, they do. They're about $500 additional each when you buy it with the unit. Does the AC operation simultaneously charge the battery unit. No, it does not. Unfortunately, this is why you might have to buy two AC units, which is really expensive. Um, dual hose, why the dual hose? It's more efficient. You have one that brings in uh, the uh, fresh air and expels the hot air. The other one expels the hot air. Let's see, how do you install? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I don't really need to explain too much about that. Just the whole portable unit. The main thing you want is to exhaust the hot air and let, let it bring out the, the cool air. So just run it wherever that you can get fresh air. Okay. Um, can you run the unit separately with its own power cord and also charge the battery at the same time? No, no you can't. In-car charging is, I suppose, possible, but you'd need to get extra adapters or, um, or you get a power inverter. You could, I suppose you can get a, um, a DC to AC power inverter hook that up to your car, and then from the that output from the AC inverter, make sure it's pure sine wave, usually more efficient that way. Then connect that over to the battery pack and that will charge the unit or operate the unit. 
Uh, the peak wattage draw from the power input source is 260 watts. In most cases, I have not ever hit up to 260 watts. I think I hit as high as 220 once. It really depends on your condition. In a really hot car, you could probably hit 260. All right, and in, in a case like that, in a hot car where it's otherwise be like 100 degrees inside, at most you're gonna get like, you know, 70 some degrees of, of, of output of the air. Mm, is there a problem with being, it being stored for months at a time? Probably not. You wanna, you wanna charge up the battery pack oh, every couple of months. Comes with one battery uh, unit for cooling down a room. No, I don't think so. It'd be, have to be a really small room in the shade and, or maybe not too hot. How do you drain this? Yada yada. If it's lower, this if it's lower than the window. Well, you put this thing in here and basically uh, keep it plugged in and then have it running into a bottle or something or somewhere lower. As this include, okay, is it suitable for boat? or rocking motion. Slight rocking motion is okay. You definitely don't want to rock it a whole lot. This is not something you're gonna throw on a, let's say, uh, I don't know, extreme ATV. I mean, you'd have to strap it down anyway because you don't want something that's uh, 20, 30 pounds flopping around. And yeah, I wouldn't do that. This is not for rugged off-road environments where you might be flipping over in a buggy. Uh, so for venting, there is an exhaust hose that draws the cool air from anyone have diagrams. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah, I don't have a diagram, but I suppose I could draw one. It's really simple. Well, I'll just show you a uh, picture of it or video of it. And I've got the exhaust vent going out there, and I just used the foam that was included in the container. And I got the intake right here. Intaking air right here, knocking it out there cool air coming from here. Can you use this indoors without venting? Yeah, you could. Uh, I've actually used that. But keep in mind that you're not gonna get any real benefits for cooling for the room. You're only gonna get spot cooling on you. So for instance, if I turn this on right now, I'm gonna turn it on right now. All right, it's gonna slowly ramp up. Okay, by default, when I turn it on, it does rocket cooling because it's trying to cool it right away. And that's the strong cooling feature here. You're gonna hear it slowly ramp up, all right. Now, as this ramps up, basically the fan ramps up for both sides. Uh, the, the, there's separate fans in the back, one for expelling the hot air, one for bringing in the cool air and then expelling, uh, you know, the, the air conditioned air out here. And, uh, you, you know, so it's gonna take a little while to um, ramp up, but what's gonna happen is basically equal, equal amounts or maybe more amounts of hot air is gonna come out here and then the cool air here, they basically cancel each other out. So if you're trying to cool a room without venting this to some other room or environment that is not sealed off from the room that you're cooling, you're not gonna get anywhere. Basically, the whole thing is just gonna be a waste of energy other than that it's gonna cool me specifically, but warm up the rest of the room. So net gain of basically zero, all right? But I will feel a lot cooler, whereas the rest of the room will feel a little bit warmer. So yeah you're gonna to wanna to vent this. Now, if you're outdoors, it really doesn't matter, does it? Because you're really, you're only keeping the, the you're only gonna to wanna to cool yourself. So that's where, you know, that's where this works best. Just outdoors, where you wanna just have a cool breeze on you at all times when there is zero breeze, uh, this will cool you and yourself off only. All right, I think that's all the questions. Let me know if you have any more. Uh, typically, people don't, really want to know too deep of the details. So I think I've covered just about everything I can think of with a zero breeze. I've had this a couple of months right now. So that's my experience with it. But yeah, if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask me down below. I think I've covered just about everything except for one more thing. In the front here, and this will be in the user guide. I'll link to the user guide down below. There's actually a little air filter here and Actually, I don't really see, this is just a little mesh here, but but yeah, you could, you could add a little bit of filter here if you did want to filter air a little bit, but if you do, you will block off uh, the efficiency, the vents, okay? So there is a little bit of airflow coming in through here too. 
But yeah, overall, I do like it. I just think it's way too expensive. And unless you're outdoors a whole lot and you really, really need, um, you know, that, that cool breeze with you everywhere and you have the space for it, right? You gotta have the space for it and the power and everything. Uh, it's just not worth it. We're just not quite there yet. But this is the best you can get right now. And if you're interested in getting it, please check out my links down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.